Here's the reflector material I use. It comes in a very, very tight roll. I didn't show the part of me struggling, trying to unravel this roll. It's just difficult stuff. Uh, it's strong in the wind, that's why I like it, but it's just a, it gives you a fight when you're trying to work with it. It takes a little bit. What I'm doing here is now it's unrolled. I take my mallet, my rubber mallet, and I'm just trying to get some of the bend out. This is in the on the concrete. So I got some of the bend out, and this reflector is 36 inches high. The material is 30 inches wide. That's as wide as I can buy this, which is just perfect. And uh, I'm going to mark with a marker right here, 36 inches. And I'm going to mark that all the way across. And then I need to take my handy cutters and every one of these has to be cut. And I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to move it. Now, this is simple, but I've marked that line. I've measured it in a couple places and made sure I was on. When you start working with a grid like this, and you're cutting and you're doing things, your eyes can be lost. So always have a good reference. Otherwise, you might mess up some expensive material. Okay, so I've uh, cut my piece, and I moved it onto this piece of nasty old carpet. And I'm doing that because it gives you a little bit of cushion, and you can actually do a good job of getting things flat. This may be difficult to see on the video, but I think you get the point. Now, you may have to flip it around a few times, and sometimes you're, really, you're fighting a force here. See, you want this to be stiff in the wind. That's why I chose this material. trying to hammer it flat. I'm just trying to get the little bit of bend out. And I'm just tapping actually with the mallet. So after a few minutes with the mallet, flipping it over several times, you see the bends, you, you just sort of work them out. It's metal. You take your time. It gets it fairly straight. You just, it's never going to be perfectly perfect, but it's close. That's what you need. Now we set this aside. Here's the gray Hoverman I've been working on all through this video. I set this one aside, rebuilt that, built the backbone, drilled the holes, made the insulators. Uh, this is going to be mounted. Here is the backbone for the reflector. I've made two small indentations. I had to put it on the uh, screen and measure where it's going to be. So, uh, so I have, uh, I could put two uh, screws and wide washers on there to hold the screen. Here, the back of the bolts will hold the uh, the mesh or the screen on. So I need to drill a little bit and then I'll show you how to put it together. So I noticed when the material was laying on the floor I needed to take my mallet and do a little more work. 
Now, this is critical how you put this on. The longitude lines are facing the backbone. This is the rear of the backbone. These are the longitude lines, the long ways. These are the latitude lines. Because you're going to set this right in the middle. I've measured this so it comes out perfectly even. Uh, I need 14 inches per side. So there's the middle. And that's wrong. I have to cut an inch off. I didn't do that part. All right. I corrected my mistake. I forgot that this piece is 30 inches wide and I need it to be 29 inches wide so I have an inch in the center to lay flat against the backbone and to be even on both sides. So I have 14 inches from here out, 14 inches from here out. Now what I'm going to do is take a plier and I've got a mark here. I'm going to put a screw and a washer in here. I'm going to pinch these together. And I'm also going to pinch down here at the lower mount and at the upper mount. That allows your uh, screw and washer to hold tighter. All right, hang on. Here I have the mounting bracket. And I have a stainless steel screw and a washer. That goes in here. And I'm going to screw this down. I start in the center. I usually start everything in the center. That way you can line things up better. Now this is going to be a bear to put in. But then again, you don't want to use a drill and strip things out. Okay. You just put some muscle on it. It's good for you. Keep you in shape. Okay. And you'll see that that's holding the grid. There's one more that goes at the lower end. Here a bolt goes through. I'm going to make sure I can get my bolt through there. And this long bolt, stainless steel, goes through here. No washer. The head will hold it down. Same with this one. There we go. And I'm going to have, up the far end here, I'm going to have a... Uh, a screw and a washer. Here will be another one of these. I'll take care of that and we'll move on. So I have a bottom mount. This is the bolt, the through bolt. I've turned this over and put a washer, a lock washer, and tighten that down. Here's another mount, another bolt. And up on the very top, there's just a a washer, a lock washer, and a screw. And that holds it securely. It'll hold everything together. So we have a very flat reflector mounted to its backbone. Here I've run the posts through. I've attached these a nut and a flat washer. Don't put a lock washer there. You don't need it. And we're ready to mount the antenna, the element. This is the gray Hoverman element. 
we worked on. I'm going to put this on here. And sort of set that in place. Now, the back, the reflector is kind of universal. I use these long threaded stainless steel bolts so I can adjust. On a bow tie antenna, I want five inches between the grid and the elements. On this gray hoverman, I want 4.5 inches. So this is adjustable. I can build any element or array I want as long as the holes line up and uh, attach it here. And it fits. Now I'm going to put a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut on there. And I'm going to adjust it. Here I have a square. It's set to 4.5 inches. Now I can see that I'm off. So I'm going to lower this evenly. Until I get to the measurement I want, which is 4.5 inches. Check it all around. So that is now set at 4.5 inches, right down the top. Now, depending on the antenna I'm building, I can use smaller bolts because there's excess here. Don't cut that off, you make a mess. Tighten it down and check again. You're not building a space shuttle, so it only has to be close. Tighten from the bottom. Tighten from the top, get it tight. You really don't want it to move. <laughs> That's real nice. Looks good. And that's the gray hoverman. We'll take a better look. It has a tedious part. And this is the tedious part. I take the end and I bend it up at about oh, 45 degrees or so. It's for stability just you don't have the end of the reflector blowing around in the wind it just adds a little bit of stiffness to it and we try to do it nice and neat and uh, you don't want to watch me do this whole thing it's really boring but that adds stability to the reflector it helps a lot
Now for the ballon. Transformer. Simple little thing. It's not expensive. In the center. That's the feed point center. Just open it up. Slide it on top of the washer. And tighten it. Coaxial cable attaches right there. That trans that transforms 300 ohm antenna to 75 ohm cable wire or coax wire, and uh, that feeds in, and that's it. Here we go. Here's the antenna finished. Here's those tedious bends I made on the edge. The antenna looks nice. It's adjusted properly. Bell ends adjusted. We went through everything of making the elements, making the backbones, doing the drilling. All told, if you were to start from scratch, if I was to start from scratch, it takes me about two hours to build one of these up. But I always build, uh, I build in sections, like build backbones, build insulators, build elements, and then put them all together one day. So it's, uh, it's a fun project. And this is probably the most powerful antenna you can make. It, it gives you about 12, 15, maybe more decibels. It's difficult for them to run this type of grid through the computers, uh, the engineers. They've done it. It takes a while. But they're not sure. It may be even stronger. I know the signals I get, they hold up in the wind, the rain, heavy thunderstorms. This is Florida. We get thunderstorms. And uh, the choice of materials are weatherproof. It's windproof. And uh, next is mounting. How to mount this. Thanks for watching. Bye.